Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gary with another Fan TV. Back at you, another video, man. Like the content of this video, go ahead, uh, smash that like button on the content of this channel. Go ahead, subscribe. Man, look, uh, we wanna talk about this Ravens and Bengals game. I got my guy Evan here, man. You know, he ain't been here in a minute. You know what I'm saying? So it's good to have him back. You know, we don't got Nevin here with us, so, you know, we still down down a man, but, you know, it's good to have Evan back, man. What's going on, bro? How you feeling, man? Feeling good, bro. Feeling good, bro. Potentially, this could be the last Purple Friday of the year. Hopefully not, you know, but, you know, we I'm right, man. Rest in peace, Sarah Goosa, man. I mean, got the, got the two, two bowls on the hat, too, so just let them know. Oh no, I like that. I ain't need I ain't need peep the hat. That's that's all. I like that. Um, so we're gonna start off talking about um, you know, Lamar Jackson. Um, he officially been ruled out. I'm gonna get the injury report, everybody that's that that's ruled out, things like that. So Lamar Jackson, the injury, Brandon Stevens illness. Uh, I think he might still be in the hospital, you know what I mean? So prayers up to him. Hopefully everything's all right with him. Uh Tylen Wallace, hamstring. He played like one play first the bang was, I guess, I don't know. You know, he caught a pass, he looked all right then. You know, unfortunate there. But uh, Tyler Huntley questionable with his shoulder wrist. Um, guys who were on injury report that have no injury designation, so they're going to play. Uh, Gus Edwards cleared concussion protocol. He's going to be out there. Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters. So we got the dynamic duo back um, in full. Jason Pierre, Paul, Ronnie Stanley. All right. So that's the uh, injury list in full. Guys who's playing, guys who's out. But obviously, we got to start with the guy at the top, man. So. What's your take on everything that's going on surrounding Lamar Jackson? It's pretty simple for me. All right. Um it's no there's no reason to risk it risk more or worse injury for him playing. You know, he got hurt. Everybody always talked about how he's not gonna be able to sustain this play because he's a running quarterback. And every time he's got injured in his career, he's been in the pocket. So um I don't think that it's it's worth going out there for and potentially making the injury worse. And then we have a situation like an RG3, you know? And I really want to avoid that. I don't even want to put that into the air. You get what I'm saying? Because before RG, before RG3 got hurt, obviously, like, he was putting up crazy numbers, like crazy numbers. He was going to be – nobody expected him to do what he was doing, first and foremost. Nobody. So he started turning up. Then when he got hurt, they rushed him back from injury, you know, and he he just flew. Well, uh, I think it was Haloti Nada actually flew into his to his knee. You get what I'm saying? And made everything 10 times worse. So, you know, with that being said, um, I have no problem with Lamar feeling as though that he's not 100 percent to play. He need to stay away, stay put, keep rehabbing. From what I understand, um, by the time of I think the day after the Super Bowl, they said that like he should be like 100% cleared from this injury, you know, bearing any setbacks. So, you know, um, what do you got? Two years left on his contract? Or oh, no, no, right? He got two years left on the contract, right? Or oh, one? Who you talking about? Lamar. Lamar. Um. Well, he's in his fifth year, so it's kind of really kind of like one year. Then they got franchise tag. Right. And, you know, with that being said, I'm pretty sure he don't want to play on a franchise tag. So it's going to be an interesting offseason. And um, I, I can see that, the, you know, the the media, they doing their thing right now. They kind of like painting a certain picture that, you know, Lamar is he, he doesn't want to play and things of that nature. But nobody know your body like you know your body. So if you don't if you don't feel that he 100 percent. If it's a if it's a grade three sprain or two or two and a half, whatever they calling it right now, and he don't feel one hundred percent, I don't have no problem with it. I feel as though that he should just stay put, keep rehabbing, and you know, get the keys to Huntley and and Anthony Brown, and we gonna see where they take us for real. That's all. I, that's all I really got for Lamar. I want you. I want. I want him to take his time getting back. I don't need him rushing back, and I need some of these fans, man, to ease up on him. You know, I mean, let them, let them, let them get healthy. This is the, I don't care what nobody say. I know Joe Flacco won us a Super Bowl and all of that, but this is the best quarterback we ever had in franchise history. It's just that simple. Like it's, it's not even close if you ask me, because if you want to be technical, Joe Flacco was good for the playoffs. He was good for a for for them, uh, for them playoffs right there. And after that, 
He was he was subpar. You know, a lot of people called him elite. I might I might even be on record calling him elite, but that was just a fan in me at the time. But when you really see elite compared to, to come on now, that's all I got to say about that, man. I don't have no problem with Lamar, you know, sitting out until he's a hundred percent. No, I agree. And yeah, Joe Flacco gave us the playoffs and he gave us really that one year underneath Gary Kubiak, which, you know, that's probably his best season as a whole, you feel me? But yeah, like you said, you know, he's up and down. So I'll go even a step further. Lamar is the best offensive player, period, in Ravens franchise history, you know. Um, you know, if, if he continues to be a Raven, he'll go down right behind Ray Lewis and Ed Reed, you know what I'm saying? Like, he'll, he'll be right there with them kind of guys, you know, as far as an overall player. So, um, at, at first, when I when I thought that, you know, we was hearing a pussy he might come back, I was like, well, to me, I was like, all right, well, Lamar can't lose, right? Because if he goes out there and loses the game, they're going to say, well, um, you know, he was hurt, whatever, he'll still get paid. If he goes out there and win, then, you know, he can add more money to the pot, right? But then when he puts the tweet out yesterday, and the, the thing that, set, that slid out to me was, um, there's still inflammation surrounding my knee, and my knee remains unstable. Once I saw heard that my knee remains unstable, I'm, I was like, okay, I'm out, I'm out. I, 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 when he said that, I said, okay, you know what, bro? He's Lamar Jackson's been the kind of guy. As far as we know, you gotta drag him off the football field. So if he's going this far to not play, he's hurt. Simple as that. Um, it's unfortunate that the Ravens have like this secrecy around injuries, and it's caused the fans to lose trust in everything that they say. You know, earlier this year, we thought Bateman was going to be out for two, three weeks, and all of a sudden, he come back, he's done for the year. You know, J.K. Dobbins was on and off. We didn't really get the full story of what happened with him. So, you know, it's like the Ravens have kind of lost trust within the fan base as far as how they handle injuries and how they report injuries. You know, John also, Harbaugh would say, well, competitive advantage, but go ahead. Also, Dark also, Wolf. Remember the Dark Wolf situation? And he, so Derek Wolf called him up. He said that the Ravens train like, um, you know, the, the beginning of the season is the playoffs pretty much. Like they, they ramp you up so hard in the beginning of the season that by the time the season comes to the end, guys are falling, are falling off, you know, and I, we've kind of seen that, you know. So, um, and we, and I was one of the people that criticized Derek Wolf. I, I was. But some of the stuff he's saying is correct. He still serves some of his but He was still carrying a bear on his back when he said he had a back injury. I, I, I still can't let him get past that. He still can't let that down for me. I'm sorry. Full bear on your back. You, you can't let that down. But he was correct in some of the points he made. So, but that's my thoughts on the Mud Jackson. We don't want to drag it out too long. We actually do want to talk about the actual game. So now, question number one is at the top of the list, right? The Ravens versus Bengals. We know that somebody has to play quarterback. So who do you want out there? Tyler Huntley? or uh anthony brown i released a poll on on my youtube channel and the vote was split 52 26 votes for anthony brown 26 votes for tyler huntley so the fan base is split man where, where you at all right so at the at the watching tyler huntley for what what is that four weeks about four weeks saying tyler huntley for four weeks you know i, I realized that he is a backup quarterback for a reason, with all due respect. You know what I'm saying? Um, undrafted for a reason, with also with all due respect. But I think I I might be wrong here. I think our best bet is with Anthony Brown. Um, with the with the running game, doing what the running game is going to do. I honestly don't think that the uh, opposing defenses look at um, Tyler Huntley as a threat rushing the ball. Obviously, he's not a threat as Lamar is. That's that's what I was saying. You know what I'm saying? Um, so they feel like they could they could box him in. And if you've seen if you've seen Tyler Huntley play over these past couple of weeks, he hasn't shown much elusiveness. I definitely thought he was way more elusive than what he's shown so far, but but he's really not. He's more. I guess he's more of like a straight line speed guy. He's not that quick. You know, he can he might fool you. And and bust out like a 10, 15 yard run real quick, you know. But as far as those runs where, you know, he pulls on the RPO, make a guy miss, make another guy miss, and then get a first down, we're not gonna get that from him. And defenses in particular, they're not scared of that. They're not afraid of that. Now, Anthony Brown, on the other hand, like you told me. I I didn't I used to I didn't watch him at Oregon. I'm not gonna say in cap like I did, you know what I'm saying? But I heard the name before. 
but I also knew from from what I was told from you, you told me, you know, he he's more of an arm talent for what they say. And he showed that with those back throw back shoulder throws that he threw this past week against the Bengals. And they was good throws. A lot of the, you know, a lot of the throws that he made that was back shoulder was for first downs. You know, Sammy Watkins, we're gonna get to him too. Um he had a back shoulder throw, but he turned around and fumbled it. You know, trying to make trying to make something happen. I'm not mad at that, you know, for me, trying to make something happen, but that's just the game. But my thing is with Anthony Brown plus our run game, I don't think that the bank we're gonna get to the game, but I don't think that the Bengals can stop J.K. Dobbins. He already showed it once this year. You know, um, I don't think that they can stop J.K. Dobbins in a combination. If we could get the combination of him and Gus going, like trending in the right direction. I, I think I think that Anthony Brown would be the right person for that. The thing that not gonna Anthony Brown is the turnovers. Um, I know for a fact that Tyler Huntley, if it's not a strip sack, he not gonna throw a pick. You know what I'm saying? He he rarely throws picks. He rarely turns the ball over if it's not a strip sack. So my thing is is that with Anthony Brown, you know he he turned the ball over, and that's basically how. Cincinnati was able to score on us, the turnovers, because they wasn't really moving the ball against us on defense at all. So, you know, um, with all that being said, I think we should give Anthony Brown the start. You know, I seen him, I seen him after that uh Steelers game. He posted the Willie Beeman picture. Like I'm I'm rocking with Willie Beeman this weekend, man. We're gonna rock with Willie. So, man, you hit on a couple great points. The, the the best part about Tyler Huntley is that he's not going to lose you the game, right? The worst part about Tyler Huntley is he's not going to win you that game either. You know what I mean? So he's so safe with it, you know? So I, I lean in the Anthony Brown camp as well, right? And people have said the same thing that, that you have brought up. Oh, Anthony Brown's not really a runner of the football. Listen, Tyler Huntley runs the football like he thinks he's like a linebacker. You know, he could, I've seen him go head up with linebackers more often than I, I ever want to see my quarterback do. And even when he does pull the ball, he's a straight beeline to the sideline. There's no elusiveness. There's no nothing. And he's barely getting down when he does that, right? So if Anthony Brown could prove to be just a willing runner, just just, just pull the ball on the read option a couple times. You don't got to do whatever. Just, you know, run the ball three, four times just to let them know that you're willing to do that. That's more than enough for me. Um, and then if I get into his stat line, right, I think it was 19 for 44, 286. One, 286 yards. Tyler Huntley's been around 100 and 17, you know what I mean, kind of yards, okay? That's, let's be completely honest here, right? The Bengals played their starting defense. That was everybody for the Bengals. He threw a 286. Demarcus Robinson had five drops by himself, okay? Ta- uh, hey, Isaiah Lackley had a great game. Isaiah Lackley might have had two drops. I think Charlie Kohler had a drop. So, like, if we started counting it up, the Ravens had eight, ten drops. So, now that 286 could have been 300-plus with almost 30 completions, okay? Now, obviously, you're not going to catch everything, but, you know, we're talking hypotheticals here, okay? And then the three turnovers. The first turnover, that's all him. You know, he got to step into that throw. He sailed. That's all him, right? The second one, Demarcus Robinson. That's one of those five drops. Make a play for your quarterback. Catch the ball. The third one, well, yeah. Yeah, the third one, the strip sack. I'm blaming that on Greg Roman. It's the end of the half. Why you have your backup, undrafted free agent rookie throwing the ball to two yard line, bro? Come on now. now. Now, listen, he needs to get rid of the football. He does, but let's have some situational awareness. It was like 20, it was like, what, what, like three, 30 seconds left in the half? We not going 98 yards for Anthony Brown. We not doing it in that kind of time, bro. Run the ball, punt it back to the Bengals. And, you know what I'm saying? So I'm putting that one on Greg Roman. Um, but, like you said, bro, like, to me, it's about, yes, Tyler Huntley can run the ball a little bit better, but does he scare somebody throwing the football down the field? No, he doesn't. And if we're talking about a shoulder tendonitis issue, right? Tyler Huntley, apparently he's been back throwing in practice, whatever. So that's that's good for him, you know. But that's not something that's just going to get better right now. He's going to need months off of not throwing. His his arm, by the probably midway through the second quarter, is going to hurt again, right? So now a guy who already didn't have a that strong of an arm, his arm is going to probably be hurting again. Anthony Brown shows some big time throws. You mentioned Sammy Watkins. I even love the jump ball he threw to Isaiah Life. Give your guy a chance to make a play. And Isaiah Lackley came down with it. You feel me? So 
I'm I'm definitely rolling with um Anthony Brown for sure. Um, like I said, I put the poll out. The poll was split last time I checked it. So um, if I had to know the Ravens, though, if I had to, if we know the Ravens, Tyler Huntley will be starting. Okay. Um, but if it's my call, if it's Evans' call, we roll with Anthony Brown for this game. Um, that that's just how I'm rocking with it. So now let's get into the game part. All right, you gotta tell me, man, how can the Ravens win this football game? How do they do it? We got pray first and foremost. All right. <laughs> it's like, no, but uh, seriously, though, if we want to win this football game, I need that defense to make – defense got to score a touchdown. Defense might have to score a touchdown for us to win this game. Um, and we got to run the ball. We got to run the ball. So we got to keep – we got to keep Joe Burrow off the field. It's got to be one of them, you know, them old school playoff games against Tom Brady where we used to just run the ball. You know what I'm saying? Keep the keep Tom Brady out the field. That's the best right now. I feel like that's our best. What, what do they say? Best defense or, or best? Yeah, that would be our best defense. But our defense is good. Our defense is great, if you ask me. And everybody's back for the defense. I'm not. I'm really not worried about the Bengals' offense as much as I would be if it was if this was last year. If this was last year, I don't want no. You know what I'm saying? I don't want no smoke. But this year. Our defense is so much better now with Roquan Smith signing that he just signed his big his big deal, you know what I'm saying? Um and he he we traded for him. We signed Marcus Williams this offseason, and those two guys been balling since they got here. Literally. Literally since they got out the plane, they've been balling since they got here. So I think that if we can score one time, if we can score one time on offense, maybe twice on offense. And get a touchdown on defense, which is very hard to do. Or at least if we score once on offense, get field goals, and then the defense score, I think we can win this game. Because I think our defense can stop the, the Bengals offense. They, they I don't think that they're not gonna be able to run the ball on us. They're gonna have to attack us in the air. And I I like my DBs against their wide receivers this week. And I think it's Taj Boyd out. So I know Taj Boyd got injured last game, and it looked like it might have been a concussion. Not sure. Um, so I'm not sure if he's gonna be playing. Obviously, he's their, you know, he's their third down threat in the in the passing game, and they got they're gonna have Hayden Hurst. But I like I like our matchups across the board. You know, we got we got Marlon matching up with with Chase possibly, or or or, or uh, Marcus Peters matching up with him, and then Marlon matching up with T Higgins. Uh, who we got in the nickel? We got Pepe in the nickel this week, probably because uh, Brandon Stevens. Brandon Stevens is, yeah, is or they, you know, they they've been playing. They were putting Kyle out there too. Right, but I I feel like yeah, I can see Kyle going to the nickel too. Um, but I think I think they might have Kyle fake shadowing uh Hayden Hurst, and then you know you put Roquan Roquan gonna make a play. That's just that's just facts. Roquan gonna make a play, man. I'm looking. I'm really looking forward to see how this game play out. I'm very optimistic, saying as though that we don't have Lamar this week, and um, I think that we can win this game if if we can score score a touchdown. I don't think that they can stop J.K. Dobbins on the ground. Yeah, man. So to me, this this needs to be J.K. Dobbins' first career game with twenty plus carries. I need to see him run the ball twenty twenty two times. Gus, Gus, like I said earlier, cleared uh, concussion protocol. If he can get you know, 10 to 15 in there, too. We're talking about 30-plus 30, 30 times running the ball. Hold the ball away from Joe Burrow because, like he was saying, um, your best, your, uh, our best defense will be keeping him off the field. You know, we have a good defense. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, ball control. If if we can get third and twos, third and ones, where we can do – where the whole playbook is open for, for, for Gregory Roman, um, he can't mess it up too bad. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Um, that would be ideal, right? J.K. even said, I want the ball. I want the team on my back. So he's he's fired up. He's, he's ready. And, you know, J.K., he, when he's already like, – he's always like that. So that ain't me too surprising. Um, and as far as the defense goes, I don't want to use last week's game too much because every every game is different, obviously. But the Bengals, they like they were going to blow us out first quarter. It looked terrible, right? Second quarter, they don't really do too much. At halftime, it's 24 to 7. The Ravens, the end of the game is 27 to 16, which means the Bengals scored three points in the second half. And don't tell me they wasn't trying. 
all they started was out there. They was trying to blow us out. They was trying to send us a message like, oh, y'all, you know, the, the whole coin flip thing really pissed them off or whatever, or the potential of that. So they wanted to say, oh, ain't going to be no chance in the point, but we're going to blow y'all out, right? And they couldn't do it. Simple as that. They couldn't, they couldn't do it. This Ravens defense buckled up. Mike McDonald has shown that he can make adjustments, right? Whatever you're working for a team, he can sometimes take that away. Um, now, the Ravens can't have the kind of start that they did last game, but, you know, if if the defense, like you said, could get, maybe not even just a touchdown, if they can get a turnover in the opposing, like, you know what I'm saying, like, inside the 20, you feel me, where it's like, you don't have to go that far, even though the original offense ain't great. It might actually, you know what, it might have to be a touchdown. You know what, you're right, it might have to be a touchdown. Um, yeah, so if, if the defense should get a touchdown, that's that's confidence to the moon, bro. Um, but, yeah, listen, with the offense, it's going to be running the ball. I need to see – I like what I saw from Charlie Kohler. Um, honestly, I did. Um, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I need to see all three tight ends on the field because they, they're, they're the best options, you know. Likely Andrews, Kohler, and give me um, Sammy Watkins. Those, those, those are the passing options, uh, give, you know. Andrew's been Andrew's been playing around outside. Now he gave AJ Terrell the Vince a couple of weeks ago. I still don't know how he did that. I, I I don't know where that came from. But likely in the slot, Kolar in one, uh 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 Sammy Watkins on the other outside. You might you might be cooking with something there, bro. Um but I did want to talk about, I did want to ask you, do you think the Bengals, do you think the Ravens got in the Bengals head a little bit last week? Because the Bengals are still talking about we're gonna get our get back and they was playing dirty. And, and if, if they did, do you think that's something that can help the Ravens or that's just going to amp the Bengals up even? So going into the game, I think that the Bengals was already amped up. And, you know, sometimes they, they come out, you come out giddy and jump me, and then you get hit in the face one time and then you, you shock now. You shock now, you know what I'm saying? You laid back. That's why I think the second half went the way the second half went. Because they came out, they was hyped when they came out. You know what I'm saying? They was definitely amped up when they came out. And, you know, this week, I mean, not this week, but second half, we punched them in the face. And they was chilling. They was cooling. They was laid back. They ain't want no smoke, really. Um, So I do think they're going to use that as bulletin board material. I think they're already using it because they, I've been seeing all the propaganda on the from Bengals Twitter looking at, you know, all of uh, the, the bump from Roquan Smith and him throwing the ball, you know, he was playing with, he was playing with an attitude. I mean, that's what you want. You want that from your linebacker. I'm sorry that your linebacker is not dogs like mine is. My bad. You know what I'm saying? He he was playing with a chip on his shoulder. He's playing like he wanted, he had a point to prove. And, you know, I can't sit here and say that he's not going to do the same thing Sunday. I think it's going to be a little bit more ramped up Sunday because it's a lot on the line, season on the line. You just signed a big contract. They talking. They talking crazy about your man eight. You know what I'm saying? That's his teammate at the same time. So I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to uh, – I think the defense is going to come out and, and punch him in the mouth again and keep punching him in the mouth. You know what I'm saying? I think, I think, that's, I think that's going to be the storyline. Like, I know a lot of – as a recent, like, not – it hasn't been big. Uh, talk about, you know, how I used to say defense win championships and things of that nature. The running game going to help you in the playoffs. As of late, that's been an anomaly, if you if you want to be honest, because these offenses are so high-powered, it's kind of hard to do that. But they haven't ran into a defense like ours yet. That, that's, 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 that's good. And we got a decent – we got a decent pass rush now. Well, we got the right rotation of pass rushes in there. Even though Jabo got sacked last week, like a strip sack. On top of that, first that was like his first game. That was great to see. You know what I'm saying? Oway played good. Good for you know, I I I'm a I'm a critic of Oway because I think he should be doing better than what he is. But he played well last week. Um, you know, Justin Houston playing at a high level. So and the stakes is on the line. We are we are we're a veteran team. We are older team than what the Bengals are. I, I was I would say, you know. I, I never looked at the stats and who who old, who the oldest player on the Bengals is, but I know the oldest player on our team probably is Calais Campbell, and he's been playing out his mind, you know. So, and um, I, I I don't I think they'll use it as bulletin board material, but I don't think it's gonna matter because you know everybody got plans so they get punched in the face. 
Yeah, Bengals are doing a lot of crime, man. The road corner's been bumped. While I do think it was intentional, it ain't that big of a deal, bro. Um, if Jamar Chase wanted to do something about it, he could have did something about it. He didn't want to. Okay. Um, the T. Higgins hit, that's good football. That's good football. Blame Joe Burrow. He threw a hospital ball. Okay. He he, he left his whole midsection. And T. Higgins is, what, 6'4"? You can't leave a 6'4 receiver that exposed. And Dale Wally hit him in the gut. Showed him to the gut. Illegal. You know what I mean? So, it was, and then the tossing the ball, Jamar Chase, I didn't, I didn't care about that. Well, like, whatever, bro. Whatever. Um... Yeah, they did a lot of crying, so it is what it is. But you did mention one player, David Ojabo. His first career sack is a strip sack on Joe Burrow. That's got to give him immense confidence, so that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, and I, the, So the question now, does he give the Bengals any added confidence or added, um, uh, uh, I guess, you know, aggression? Sure, I mean, it's the playoffs. If you're not already amped up for the game, then, you know, what, what, what are we doing here anyway? So I don't think it's going to add any fuel to the flames or anything like that. I think the Ravens are going to come on and do the same thing. Kyle Hamilton uh, tackled Jamar Chase with a screen and threw him to the ground, right? To l- l- let him know he was here. I expect to see more of the same, bro. And if the Bengals, if they want to come back and get their get back, as they were saying, be careful. Don't get kicked out. Of, don't get kicked out of a playoff game doing something stupid. <laughs> don't do that. So, you know, I, I'm cool with it, bro. The Ravens have – that's the Ravens' history is being bullies on the block. You know, I mean, it is, it is what it is. So, I don't got too much about that. So, um, I do want to do the score predictions, obviously. Um, so I, I will I will start off with mine, and then we'll we'll, we'll wrap it up from there, bro. Um, so my, my my Ravens fans' heart right here is saying, "Hey, we 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 shut these guys down three points last week. We outscored them in the second half, nine to three. Right now, that don't mean nothing for this week. But um, if Tyler Boyd doesn't play, they're down a receiver. I'm not sure if he's. I don't know if he clicked. I'm not sure put a call or not." But we're up and but we're up a cornerback. Marcus Peters is back out here. So I'm my, my heart wants to say 20 to 14, 20 to 17 Ravens, right? But my my head is saying that the Bengals are gonna have too much offense. And it's saying it's gonna be 27 to, to 13. Because we get one touchdown, two field goals, but we just cannot keep up with the offense. 27-13 uh Bengals. So I'm I'm stuck between those two right there. Those, those are my school predictions. I'm gonna put them both in the comment. Honestly, I'm gonna put my heart. I'm gonna put my head in the, in the comment like that. But uh, so, what you got for the score prediction? Man, it's tough, yo. Because obviously, obviously, I wish that number eight was back. You know, to help us get this dub. Um, but he not. So I feel like I'm gonna go with my heart. I'm gonna say the Ravens gonna win. Uh, seventeen. To 13. I say 17, 13 Ravens. Um, I feel like uh JK, like you said, JK Downs will have a big game. And defensive wise, I think Kyle Hamilton has a big game. Because he's been balling out, he's been balling out at the right time, too. So I think Kyle Hamilton has a big game this weekend. We're gonna need him to. All right. Um Navin did tell me his score prediction, so I'm going to throw it in here. He said 24 to 12 Bengals. So I guess he got a score on all field goals and no touchdowns in the red zone, which is um, something that could very well happen. You know what I mean? So it could very well happen. So um, you got any final thoughts when we wrap it up and get out of here, man? Uh, before we get out of here, you know, a good run, good season. We having a great season. Um, hey. I know I'm kind of looking forward to the next season already. Baltimore Ravens, do what you got to do to, one, re-sign Lamar, two, go get D. Andre Hopkins, please. Thank you. Uh, he'll, he will be traded this offseason. We need to go get him, all right? I'm going to say this again. We need to go get DeAndre Hopkins this offseason. Win or lose tomorrow. I mean, yeah, Sunday. It, it, it'll be tomorrow when y'all hit. Win or lose. We need to go get DeAndre Hopkins. I'm not sure what we're gonna give up, but we got enough. I feel like we got enough to give up to to get DeAndre Hopkins. And that's that's really all I got. This hair, this this shirt and hat is by a popular strangers hat, hat company in Baltimore. Look it up on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Ravens, what I say, 17, 13? Ravens 17, 13 this weekend. Big game from Kyle Hamilton. Big game from J.K. Dobbins. I'm out.
Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm with that for sure. Um, so yeah, man. Uh, final thoughts. Uh, well, we'll talk about the offense a little bit. I guess you said so. Ravens had three priorities this offseason, right? Sign Roquan Smith, extend Lamar Jackson, revamp the wide receiver room. No, no particular order, but that's the three priorities. They already not one out the way, right? They they signed Roquan Smith. Now get the other two done. Now as far as this Sunday, um, be the more physical team. And I think you win the game. Simple as that. Um, so that's our final thoughts on it, man. Everybody drop your score predictions down below. We'll talk about it in the comments, man. You know, from Gabriel, from Evan, man. It's just on the fan TV. We out.